Hello, so in this video what we're going to do is we're going to talk about um, sets. Now a set is essentially so so we have that a set is a collection of objects. Now, what we usually use are um, things called elements of a set or we use what we call members. So one example could be for ex uh, could be the set of one, two, three, and four. And what we could do is perhaps we could name it uh, for example, like E. Well, E is the set of the values 1, 2, 3, and 4. Okay, so another way that we can kind of say this is that we have uh, the set containing the elements 1, 2, 3, and 4. Now, one thing to note is that the order is not important. Okay, so we'll just say that the order does not matter, and uh, if we were going to have like 4, 3, 2, 1, that would be the same set E. Now, one way that we can actually write, uh, perhaps like when we say that there's an element in a set, we can say, for example, that uh, 4 is an element of the set E. Well, we can actually say that we can write 4, and then we're kind of going to write this little E looking uh, character where we'll just put that 4 is in the set E. Now, if that's the case, that we can actually figure out that whether an element is in a set or not, that means that we can actually say, for example, that 5 is not an element of the set E. So how do we notate that? we notate that by using 5 and then we just put our set our member of E but we put a line through here to represent that it's not in the set. Now we can write any set and have it be described so for instance um, we can say that um, for our set E, as mentioned before, um, E is the set of the first four counting numbers. Okay, so that means like 1, 2, 3, and 4. Now, what this does is it leads us into this whole situation of whether your set is finite or infinite. So, for example, we have that a finite 
set uh, has a limited number of elements. Okay, so that would be what we call a finite set. Let's just do this. And I'll just box it in. Okay, so we have that our finite set um, can have just an, a limited set of elements. But if that's the case, then that means that we can define what is called an infinite set. So an infinite set, um, it has an unending list of distinct elements. Okay, well, what that means is that, for example, you could look at the natural numbers. Well, you have that the natural numbers consist of the elements 1, 2, 3, 4, and then that just keeps going. So to notate that something keeps going, we just put a little uh, set of dots. So that's just to imply that the set just keeps going. which means that we cannot count that set. So we'll just box this and just say that the infinite set has an unending list of distinct elements. Okay, well, let's look a little at our set builder notation. Okay, and um, if you kind of look back at uh, the previous uh, statement about a finite set has a limited number of events, um, it should go without. It should go with saying that you know that e that was listed up there is finite. It's a finite set. Now. What we can do next is look at what we call set builder notation. Okay, well, whenever we look at set builder notation, basically what's happening is that we have that we're kind of like describing a set in words. So for instance, we have the set of all elements all elements x such that okay, so we're just going to say such that x is a natural number uh, between three, let's not use three, how about two, between two and seven. Okay, so what this means is that we have that we're just going to define a set of which that has uh, elements between 2 and 7. So what that would look like, that would look like this, where we have our set of elements 3, 4, 5, and uh, 6. Now, if we wanted to include 2 and 7, we would have to use the term inclusive. So that would tell us that we include um, the set with 2 and 7. 
Now, we we can do is uh, kind of just look at um, listing the elements of a set. So, for example, let's say that um, we want to look at listing. So, let's look at um, listing the elements of a set. So what we'll do is we'll just look at an example of how we'll just say that we have a set x such that x is a natural number and where x where we have that x is somewhere between 6 and 8. Oh, we'll write this a little differently actually. We'll write this using our interval. So we'll have less than x, less than 8. Well, if we think about it, the only natural number that's between 6, uh, 6 and 7, or not 6 and 7, 6 and 8, is the number 7. So I kind of gave that away. So we have that that's going to be equal to the set 7. So that means that we have just a single element in our set, um, which means that it's finite. Now, typically we might talk about, for example, a set that we call universal. So a universal set uh, contains all elements in the discussion. So if we were talking about the set of all registered voters, then that would be the universal set. If we were talking about the list of all Lone Star students that are registered, then that would be our universal set. Now, in any case, uh, one other set that we can look at other than a universal set is what we call the, um, the empty set. Now, a empty set or null set Okay, so we have a null set. It contains no elements. So that means that there is no single element that will be in this set, which means that it has zero sets. Okay, so typically we have like uh, this little uh, zero symbol and with a slash through it. So that just means that it's empty. Okay. Now, the last thing of which that I can talk about is what we call uh, subsets. So, a subset, so let's title this uh, subsets. A subset is if we have that, um, let's say that we have a set A, and we're going to say that A is a subset of B. What this means is that all of the elements
of A are in B. So that's denoted in the following manner. We write A and then we put a symbol that kind of looks like a C with an underline and we have B. Now <clears throat> If this is the case, then that means that um, we can form many different subsets of all of the sets in question. So, for example, um, what we'll say is that, just a couple things about a subset, is that every set is a subset of itself. So that means that we could have that B is a subset of B, which is kind of weird to say it like that, but it is uh, what we actually do say. Now another is that um, we have that the empty set is a subset of every set. Okay, so that's kind of interesting. It's like saying that there's a subset that has nothing. Now, one way of which that you can sort of visualize uh, the subsets is by drawing what we call a Venn diagram. So let's say that you have a Venn diagram and this Venn diagram has your two sets A and then let's say uh, you have B. So we have A and then we have B. Now notice that in this case um, let's say that this whole Venn diagram is the universal set. So naturally we have that both A and B Okay, so we have both A and B are subsets of our universal set in question. But in this case, you have that B is a subset of A. Okay, so the only uh, issue here is that uh, we have that uh, in some cases you may not be able to flip that where we can say that A is a subset of B um, and that's mostly because there's going to be elements that are not in B if that makes sense but more or less um, they kind of stick to what we see in the Venn diagram. Now one way of which that we can actually look at for example about subsets is if we do just a simple example. So in looking at an example, let's say for um, that we have let's say that we have a set of letters A, B, C. Okay, well we want to find the subsets. Well, we know that for example that the empty set is going to be one possibility. So that's the uh, zero elements. But then we have that another possibility could be the sets with just one element. So we have A, we have B, we have C, and then we have the two element sets. So we have A, B, we have A, C, and then we have BC. But we have one more, and that's the whole set itself. So A, B, and C. And let's just count this. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So this tells us that we have that there are. There are eight 
total subsets. Now, in general, we have that uh, for an n element set, there are two to the n subsets. Now, the thought process behind that is that essentially you're just making the decision if the um, subset is in the set or not, like, uh, I'm sorry, the elements. So that's like making a choice of in or out. So that's two options. So it's kind of like you're saying like, okay, well, two times two times two times two. And then that decision is made n total times. So we have that This is going to be done n times because you have to have that you'll do that um, at the total number of times that there are or total number of elements in the set. So that means that if you look back to the total number of subsets with a, b, and c, we could have said that if we were only trying to find the count of the subsets, that that would be 2 to the third, which is 8. So in that case, that's all of these 8 uh, subsets, which means that if you're trying to find a count of a large element set, then that's going to be really tough. Like, for example, if you simply just say that you're looking at the days of the week, So if you're saying that you're looking at the days of the week, well, that's going to be Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Well, if you're trying to figure out the uh, total number of subsets for this, well, we have that that's going to be 2 raised to the 7 because I wouldn't go through the process of saying, for example, like, uh, okay, yeah, I have the empty set, and then my other possibility is Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then Saturday but uh, there's really no need to go through that whole process because we have that it's just really 2 to the 7. So if we do 2 to the 7, that's going to be, um, should be, let's see, so we take 2 raised to the 7 and we get 128. So there are 128 subsets. Okay, so that's actually kind of interesting because who would go through the process of finding 128 subsets one after the other? That would just take too long. So in terms of like finding the number of subsets, you always want to just try to find um, like small ones for that matter. But if it's a big one, most likely it's just going to ask for the count.